I'm not a stalker. I'm not a stalker, okay? But this is being a parent in America. One day, you're on the sidelines getting ready to see your favorite team play the world's greatest sport. And the next, you're asking internet strangers for help on second grade math. Oh boy, this looks like something from a high school chemistry presentation. Well, let's take a look. Bar 159, hey, that's cool. 159 is a sum of three consecutive primes. Asks on r slash ask math, how do I do second grade math? And here we see a worksheet with some diagrams on it and a bunch of arithmetic problems. And then we have this picture attached. He says, my son is in second grade and apparently math is different now than it was when I was a kid. What is this type of math called? And how can I find videos to learn it so I can help him? Top picture is his homework. Bottom is what the teacher sent us to help him learn it. So it sounds like the teacher sent this picture as some sort of follow-up to assist in the completion of the homework. Well, bar 159, the bad news is that the math here that you don't understand is just subtraction and addition. But the good news is that it's just subtraction and addition. Now, the worksheet itself I can see as being a little bit confusing, but the bottom part that the teacher sent to help them do the homework, this is a disaster. But what you've got to understand is these days we have very cute ways of doing mathematics. Crummy old adults probably look at an algebraic equation like this and try solving it with algebra. But really, where's the fun in that? But these days, everyone knows to use the onion method. And Nietzsche talked about this, right? I'm here to peel onions and solve algebraic equations, and I'm all out of onions. Bam, bam, bam. There you go. And similarly with subtraction, right? We could do it the old crummy way, or we could use the far simpler triple node triangle method. Yeah, that was cool. So from what I can gather, the student is supposed to be able to interpret three equations from these triple node diagrams. The two numbers at the bottom add together to create the number at the top. And you can see there are equations here to show that connection. Of course, another hopeful takeaway here is that the student will realize the order of addition doesn't matter. And you can see the other two equations they're supposed to interpret from the diagram, which is that either number can be subtracted from the top number to create the remaining number. We could subtract one to get nine, we could subtract nine to get one. Over here, the student's supposed to do the same thing, but fill in the diagram. Over here, they have to do the same thing again, but now create the diagram themselves. And then it seems like we just finished with some arithmetic problems that don't involve diagrams at all. The previous two problems specifically say to either complete the figure or to draw one yourself. I'll be curious to hear your opinion. I can't say that I'm convinced this is a helpful helpful subtraction schematic. All the numbers are taking up the same amount of space, which doesn't really feel right. If one and nine have to add together to make 10, then why are they the same size as 10? Furthermore, although they add to create 10, the vast majority of that sum is the nine. So why is it the same size as the one? Further, furthermore, the one and the nine are coming together to create the 10. So why are they linked to the 10 instead of being linked to each other? For the target audience of this model, I guess I just feel like it's not self-explanatory at all. Whereas something like a bar model is completely self-explanatory. Of course, the triple node triangle diagram has the advantage of being much easier to draw. To create a bar model with precision takes quite a bit more care than just sketching a few circles with lines between them. In addition, this model shares a lot of DNA with factor trees, which will be important when students encounter those. So fair enough, I don't love it, but I don't think it's super complicated. But if you were unsure what this worksheet was asking you to do, how about these clarifying instructions? Instructions. It seems this is just showing the diagram method the students are being taught in the context of a word problem, which is translated to English here. It says that Mrs. Watts had 17 tacos, 
the children ate some, nine tacos were left, how many tacos did the children eat? Down here are just some general guidelines for solving a word problem correctly and completely. And that seems a little out of place since the worksheet didn't seem to concern word problems. But then the demonstration of the solution method over here seems so out of place that I could eat a horse. Let me explain. If we look back at the problems on the worksheet, there's something important to notice about all of the subtraction. It's all, 10 minus a thing. In other words, it's very basic subtraction that you're supposed to know. Uh, just like that. And of course, basic subtraction is pretty darn easy. But what's a major stumbling block for kids learning subtraction? Well, of course, that would be borrowing. Even subtracting relatively large numbers like 874 minus 231 can be pretty darn easy as long as there's no borrowing. But change that 231 into a 796 and suddenly this is a much trickier problem for young students because some digits in the subtrahend are greater than their counterparts in the minuend. This borrowing, or regrouping as it's sometimes called, can be a lot more difficult for students than normal subtraction, and depending on the teacher, it can feel completely enigmatic. Some teachers, though, actually hold a negative view of how borrowing is often taught in the United States. There's a viral video somewhat making fun of students' dependence on the so-called borrowing method. It goes a little something like this. Okay, we have 16 minus 9. Now, let's see, the 9 is bigger than the 6, so we'll borrow 10 from the tens place, and that gives us, all right, uh, 16 minus 9. Okay, the uh, the 9 is bigger than the 6, so we'll plus 10 minus 9. In other words, you've got to just know 16 minus 9. You've got to just know the teens minus the single digits. The borrowing method will not help you in these situations. For this worksheet, all of this seems irrelevant since there's no borrowing required. In fact, there's not even a number greater than 10 anywhere on it. Yet, this diagram in the instructions that the teacher sent seems to be giving a demonstration not for borrowing, but for that no man's land, the empty, dreadful space which lies between single digit subtraction and borrowing. And then you've got all this going on over here. So the father's confused and the teacher sends along this helpful picture. And from what I can see, this picture says, all right, young gun, you wanna do 17 minus nine like a master? Not a problem. Here's what you do. 17 can be broken down into seven and 10. So bust out your triple node triangle diagram. Now that we see a 10, let's just go ahead and take nine away from that. All right, so 10 minus nine, that's one. And now this isn't 17, but in fact, seven plus one, which is eight. Bust out the triple node triangle diagram again. 17 goes up here. Of course, we're subtracting nine, so the nine goes over here. Obviously, the equal sign here, and then of course, the minus sign over here. 17 minus nine from our previous work, we now know is equal to eight. Done and done dusted. So the father diligently studies the instructions, then returns to his son's worksheet. Phew, he wipes the sweat from his brow and says, okay, 10 minus one. So how they want us to do it is to split the 10 up into zero and 10. Then we'll take the one away from the 10, just like it was shown on the worksheet. So then we have 10 minus one. All right, um, so we'll s split this 10 into uh, uh, 10 and zero, and then zero minus one, and then <laughs> I give up. Okay, let's just do it the old fashioned American way. That's 10 hamburgers, take away one, and then count one, two, four, five, six, then eight, nine hamburgers, it's nine. God, why has everything got to be so difficult? 
Yeah, sometimes it seems like education is just getting dumber and dumber, but we really shouldn't be too hasty to judge. This whole thing seems a bit wacky on the surface, but maybe these instructions are more relevant to a different part of the worksheet. Maybe the teacher was confused about which section the father and son were having trouble with. Maybe, whether it seems helpful or not, this method of decomposing numbers is being taught really well in class and it's helping lots of the students. In fact, in her book, Knowing and Teaching Elementary Mathematics, Li Ping Ma analyzes some of the differences between math teachers in China and the US. Chinese students typically outperform US students in mathematics, despite the fact that U.S. teachers have typically received quite a bit more schooling than their Chinese counterparts. Ma studied and interviewed 23 U.S. teachers, who were all for various reasons considered better than average, and a mix of 72 Chinese teachers, ranging from what were considered very low-quality schools to high-quality schools. The first chapter of her book is about subtraction, and there's a lot of interesting material in that chapter. But specifically on page 10, you can see some diagrams that look an awful lot like the triple node triangle model. The point being made here is that not a single one of the US teachers discussed any form of regrouping numbers for subtraction, aside from exactly the one that is typically used in borrowing. When doing subtraction, the standard borrowing way, the decomposition that's typically used is to take a 10 and put it with the ones. This is in the discussion of the problem 53 minus 26. You take one of those tens and now there's 40 left and you put the 10 with the three ones. So now that's 13. So none of the US teachers mentioned any regrouping beyond that standard method. However, some of the Chinese teachers did. They showed how with a diagram like this, not only can we decompose a higher place value to add it to the lower place value, but we can decompose in other ways as well. For example, if we just use the normal regrouping method, here you're going to end up taking 6 away from 13. Like we talked about, the standard regrouping method doesn't really do you any good when it comes to the teens minus a single digit number. You have to just know that 13 minus six is equal to seven. But if you don't know that, you could decompose the minuend in other ways to get around the problem. Instead of combining the 10 with the three, you could leave the 10 all on its own and take the six away from that then take the 20 away from 40, and then you just have a 20, a four, and a three to combine together to get your final answer. Going even a step further, there's no reason that our decomposing has to be restricted to the menu end. We're subtracting 26, and we might find it suitable to decompose that as well. If 26 is decomposed into 20, three, and three, then all of the subtraction can be made very simple. First, it's easy to take a three away from 53, to get 50, then it's easy to take another three away from 50 to get 47, and then finally to take away the remaining 20 doesn't require any borrowing at all. Whether this particular presentation of this idea of decomposing a number for subtraction is helpful, it's certainly the case in general that being aware of the ways you can regroup numbers is very helpful for students learning subtraction for the first time. And even the typical method students are taught today in the United States was initially met with opposition and needed to be advocated for and studied in order to become commonplace. So if you think this is simple and easy, but this is overkill, well, in the past, some people thought the same thing about this. Long story short, well, it's a little late for that, isn't it? Ah, well, wait, speaking of late, what day is it? Bah! <laughs> School starts like tomorrow! I'm ah, where's my ticket? Okay, okay, uh, sticky notes. Sticky notes, what am I, a literature professor? Deflate! 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 Okay, okay, one calculator, two calculators, three calculators, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, hope that's enough. Uh, snacks, snacks, snacks. Trader Joe's organic cane sugar. The internet sorcerer said this is mm, so good. Okay, two first edition stewards will bring you to school and you stay home with me.
Mm. Pigeonhole principal t-shirt, optimal packing sweater, boiler, and the seven bridges. Tomei's function, Under Armour t-shirt, Mathema pigeon pins. Oh, and money for lunch. They quoted me just two cents for a hot lunch. Isn't that great?